Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be seeing detailed explanation of ASP.NET Core dependency injection. In this video, you can find differences between add singleton, add scope, add transient. If you look at these three types, add transient, add singleton, add scope, you might be getting a question like, what is the difference? I also got the same question, so I'm doing this video for that. Let's start it. So let's see what is add singleton. This is my web server and this is my web client. So I will do request from my web client to web server using a Chrome or Firefox browser installed in web client. So web server has a, a code in it and that code has a dependency injection engine. Then it has registered for logs service and these are the web components. I have these web components will be requesting for the log service instance from dependency injection engine. Okay, let's start a request. So web client will be requesting the server. Then request is submitted to the controller one. Then controller one has a dependency on logs service. This controller one will be requesting dependency injection engine, DI engine. For logs service object so this will think and it will process that and it creates an object and returns the same instance to the controller one then controller one uses that object one then it redirects to the controller two controller two also has a dependency on logs service so it also does a request to the di engine for the logs service instance this time also this will process the request and it it won't create any new object because it is a singleton in singleton if there is object already created it won't create new object so it shares the same object to the controller 2 also then controller 2 uses the object for logging then it calls the next service called service one. Service one also has a dependency on logs service. So this one also does the request to the DEI engine for logs service. This time also it process that request and as it is a single done, it won't create new object. It will share the same object it has already created. Then service one will use that object for logging. Then service one also calls the other layer that is a business logic layer one. This one also has a dependency on logs service. So it requests the DI engine for logs service. This time also this will process the request and it won't create new object as it is a single time. It will share the same object with a BL layer. Then this one next calls to the another service. This service also has a dependency on logs service. Then request to the DI engine. DI engine will process the request. Then it won't create a new object as it is a single turn. It will share the same object to that layer also. In this one, we can see that if you use add singleton, DI engine will create one object. It will use that one object across the application. So this is for one request we have seen. Let's look at the second request from the web client. So if you do another request from the web client, what happens? If you do any number of requests from your web client in case of add singleton, the same repeats. The DI engine will create instance only once and it shares that single instance to any component inside your application. For next request also, for third request also, DI engine will process if there is object already, it will share the same object. It won't create a new object. So that is what happens with a add singleton. Any number of requests 
any number of uh, dependency injections any number of usages ei engine will create only one object then it will share that one object across the application that is add single time let's look at the numbers you have one web request one di request number of instances will be one if you have one web request two di request then the number of instances are also one if you have a two re uh, web request then di uh, two di request then the number of instances final instances would be one if you have n number of web request then n number of di request then also you will be having one object created that is a single time in single time only one object will be created and used across the application the next one add scope let's see what happens in add scope to case web client will do a request that will goes to the controller one controller request to the di engine it will process it creates object one and the same process continues here same is happening like a single turn but what is the difference so here in this add scope the case for every request it will be similar like add singleton but it is only per request scope the same object will be used only per request if you start doing a next request so di engine will create a new object so di engine will create a new object for every new request so then it starts sharing that one if you have a third request ei engine will create third object and shares that third object for all the dependency injections like this in add code di engine will create new object for every request so one object is server to one request scope that's why it's a add scope okay let's see the numbers for one web request one di request a uh, one instance will be created for one web request and two di request one instance will be created and for two web request two di request there are two instances created because here instance will be created per web request if there are n web request n di request then there are n objects created okay. let's see add transient so similarly like add singleton add transient so here also we do web request from web client so the web request will be handled by controller 1 controller 1 has a dependency on log service so it requested di engine di engine starts processing then it creates object then returns the object then controller 1 has a redirection or internal call to the controller 2 then controller 2 also has a dependency on logs service so it request a di engine for the object this time di engine process the request and it creates a new object and returns it and controller 2 calls the next service service 1 this service 1 also has a dependency on logs service this time service 1 also request di engine for the object this time di engine will process and creates new object and returns it then service 1 uses that obj3 then it starts calling the next layer bl layer 1 this one also has a dependency on logs service then it will request the di engine for the object this time di engine process that request and it creates new object and returns it so bl layer 1 will use that object and it calls the next uh, service 2 this service 2 also has a dependency on logs service so this request di engine for the object this time di engine will create a new object and returns back so if you look at this one for every di request di engine is creating brand new object and returning back 
so by looking at this you can consider that for every dependency injection request so it will create a new object this is for request 1 let's see what happens for request 2 request 3 like that so i'm doing request 2 from the web client a request 2 goes to the controller 1 then that request di engine for the object this time di engine will create all brand new objects di engine will process and it will create all the new objects new setup objects object 6 7 8 9 because all the requests are brand new so it will create new object for every di request so for second request also we got new objects let's see for third request third request gone di engine process then it creates a new objects obj 11 12 13 14 15 this time also di engine created all new objects and returned like this if you use add transient it will create a new object for every di request let's look at the numbers if we have one web request one di request then one object will be created if we have one web request two di request then two objects will be created if you have a two web request, two DI request, then it will be creating four objects. If you have a N web request, N DI request, it will be creating N into N, N power of two instances. Okay, so let's look at the numbers for all three. So DI for single tan scoped transient. If we have one web request, one DI request, so one instance same for all if we have one web request two di request then in singleton one object will be created in scoped one object will be created in transient two objects will be created so if we have a two web request two di request then one for singleton two for scoped four for transient if we have a n web request then n di request then one created one object created for single time n objects created for scope n into n objects will be created for transient if you have a hundred web request and hundred di request in single time there is only one object created in scope hundred object created in transient hundred into hundred hundred multiplies hundred objects will be created that means uh, almost ten thousand objects so transient is a bit dangerous so we need to use it wisely so that's it thank you for watching